All right. Well, welcome everybody to the November NUG monthly meeting. Um, happy to see you all here. Uh, so I'm Rebecca Hartman Baker. I lead the user engagement group. If you haven't met me before, you've cer you've certainly seen my emails too. Uh, and so we'll get started on our meeting today. So. Uh, this is an interactive meeting. I really want people to participate. So please feel free to unmute and participate. Um, we also have in the nurse user Slack, we have the webinars channel that you can also use for discussions. Um, so our agenda is same as usual. Um, so we've got first win of the month. We wanna hear from people. Uh, and today I learn, and then some announcements um, and then the topic of the day, which is transitioning from Corey to Perlmutter, and then coming meetings, if you all have any topic suggestions or requests, and then last month's numbers. Okay, so it's the win of the month time, so tell us about an achievement or a shout out to someone else's achievement, because um, we'd love to hear about people's successes. So any any successes that people would like to share? Anybody? <laughs> any successes? Achievements? No, nobody's done anything for the past month. I don't know. Well, I finally um, got off the dime and am dialed into this call to learn uh -huh. about transition from Corey to Perlmutter. Good. All right. How, how's that for an achievement? That's an achievement. Congratulations. Here you are. <laughs> well done. Anybody else have any achievements? What's doing with the strike? Uh, yeah, so this, so there's the strike of the um, graduate students and postdocs going on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess it's been going on for a few days now. Um, so I don't know much about it. I haven't been to the campus or anything. I don't know what's happening there, but hopefully, hopefully they're going to be able to reach an agreement that's going to be good for everyone. Okay, well, maybe we can move on to today I learned. So did you learn anything exciting or new uh, that might have surprised you or that you think that others might uh, benefit from hearing about? Like something you got stuck on, you hit a dead end, or you were wrong about it, um, or you have a tip for using NERSC, or something else that you learned that might benefit other NERSC users? Anybody? Today, I learned that today's audience is pretty quiet. <laughs> um, nobody? I feel, I feel like, um, I feel like Ben Stein, right? Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> We're not getting anything today. That's okay. Uh, all right. So we can go on to announcements and CFPs. So um, most, I think these are included in, in the weekly email. Um, but so there's a few calls for papers still going on. So the the PASC conference, uh, they have a call for papers uh, due December 11th. And so if you get uh, selected for that, you can go talk about scientific computing in beautiful Switzerland. Um, then we've got some upcoming training events. So next week we've got uh, debugging GPU accelerated applications with NVIDIA developer tools, uh, migrating from Corey to Perlmutter training that, that NERSC is putting on on 
Thursday. Uh, and then, well, I shouldn't say next week. It's the week after next, isn't it? Because next week is Thanksgiving. So the week after that is when these are. Uh, then there's the OLCF Crusher User Experiences, which is on December 1st and 9th. And then uh, using HIP and GPU libraries with OpenMP, that's on December 14th. So those are all coming up. Um, okay, the Cori to Perlmutter transition office hours. So we've already held three office hours this month and we've met with more than 50 people. So that's wonderful. Uh, we, we're glad that, that people are coming and we encourage you to come too if you haven't come yet to one of our office hours. So we're holding about Thursdays and Fridays from 9 a.m. to noon, um, Pacific time, of course. So the next office hours are gonna be Friday, December 2nd. So the day after the Corey to Perlmutter training, uh, we'll have an office hours for people if you wanna follow up. Uh, and then the next week we'll have office hours on Thursday, December 8th. And then the week after that on Friday, December 16th, we'll take a holiday break and we'll come back on Friday, January 6th, followed by Thursday, January 12th. And probably we'll schedule more after that. Uh, but those are the ones that we currently have on the schedule for you. Okay, so the topic of the day, transitioning from Corey to Perlmutter. This is what everyone's been waiting for. Okay, so let's first talk about Corey. So we're going to retire Corey in March of 2023. Uh, you know, as you know, Corey... We installed it in 2015, so I think it's six, it's almost, it's really seven years old at this point, probably. I'd have to check the exact dates, uh, but it's probably our longest lasting system that we've ever had at NERSC. Uh, we've already allocated for out, the next allocation year based only on Perlmutter's capability, um, but we're gonna give you all some more time to transition from Corey to Perlmutter. Um, you know, the, the outpouring of people at our office hours has, and, and other, you know, uh, communications that we've had from users um, has definitely made us realize that we do need more time for people to transition from Corey to Perlmutter. Um, and we're going to retire Corey in March of 2023. I don't know the precise day that we will retire Corey, but it will be in March, probably at the end of March. So here's what our retirement plan for Corey kind of looks like. So the things that are that are in that kind of teal color, we've already done them, right? So in October, we had a software freeze. So we're not installing any new user-facing software on Corey. I mean, you can continue to compile your codes on Corey, but nothing new is coming from NERSC. Uh, and then we've already decided, you know, we have our allocations they're going to be based on Perlmutter's capacity only for the next allocation year. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of this Cori to Perlmutter transition focus. So um, we're, we're doing the office hours. Um, we're going to have the training on December 1st that I really encourage everybody to attend. Um, and so that's that's where we're at right now. <clears throat> and then hopefully in late January or early February, that's when we'll be able to announce our final date for decommissioning Corey. And let's call that date T for the sake of argument. Uh, and so at T minus one week, we will put in an we will put in a reservation that will prevent any new jobs from running at T or later. Um, and then on the day at that time when when T is, uh, we're going to delete all the jobs from the queue. You won't be able to submit any new jobs, uh, but we'll continue to allow you to log in to retrieve any files from the Cori Scratch file system. Uh, and then at T plus one week, we will close the login nodes permanently. You won't be able to access uh, the Cori Scratch system anymore. Uh, and then probably a month later or so, we will begin disassembling Corey and sending it back to the manufacturer for recycling. So typically they recycle the machines. They, so they might take out like things like precious metals that are in the 
machines, um, or they also might use the chips from our machine um, as replacement chips for other systems in the world that, that have a similar architecture that are still running. That's, that's, that's what happened with, uh, with Edison. Um, actually, I believe also they sold uh, some of the cabinets of Edison to a new owner. So they may do the same thing with Corey, but we lease it, we lease to own. Um, and so then afterwards, that's how we dispose of the machine. Okay, so transitioning from Corey to Perlmutter, we're going to do a poll. Have you all ever done a poll in Zoom? I'm launching my poll. Very exciting. So please answer, what is your current readiness status for Perlmutter? Do you want to uh, tell us about this? Okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna give everybody another 30 seconds to answer the poll. Oh, I don't need to give any more time. Everybody's answered the poll. Great. Um, okay, Let's see if I end the poll. Yes, and I will share the results with you all. Um, I don't know if this is, this is probably not showing up on the recording, but so I'll tell everybody here. We've got, um, Two out of 16 folks here who are ready to use Perlmutter. Okay, wonderful, thank you, good job. Uh, and then we have five out of 16, so that's 30, 31%, who have begun to get ready to use Perlmutter. So good on you, excellent. Uh, and then we have one person who says, they know what they need to do to get ready to use Perlmutter, but maybe you haven't done it yet. Okay, that's good. And then the remaining half, 50%, eight people say, I don't know what I need to do to get ready to use Perlmutter. Okay, excellent. Well, we will work on that. So hopefully this, this presentation will help you to understand what you may need to do. Uh, so I'm not gonna be able to solve everyone's problems today, obviously, I'm just one person. Um, but hopefully I can sort of provide you with some overarching high level strategies to know what you need to do. And then you can follow up by attending our training on uh, Corey to Perlmutter transitioning and also uh, any of our office hours that we're offering. And if you can't attend either of those, know that the training will be recorded. So you'll be able to view it online along with professional captioning uh, so that don't have to even listen to it and just watch. Uh, and then the office hours, if you can't attend office hours, that's fine. Uh, feel free to send in a ticket and we can get somebody to help you either through the ticket system or if we really need more of a like a one-on-one -on -one sort of a dialogue, then you know we're happy to organize something for you. We, we're here to help. We really want you to be able to be successful on Perlmutter. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so I just first I want to talk about there are some similarities between Corey and Perlmutter. Um, you know, they're both they're both Cray HPE systems. So they they have the Cray user environment. They have compiler wrappers that you're probably already familiar with. This CC capital CC or FTN for C C plus plus and Fortran respectively. Uh, they have Perg N for modules, programming environment module. Um, so this concept is very similar on both of the machines. You can change your programming environment based on those modules. Um, they both use Slurm as the batch system and scheduler. Uh, and they have very similar queues set up. So we've got regular, premium, overrun. There's still some of the less utilized queues that that aren't quite the same and that we're still working on perhaps, but uh, but it's a very familiar, it should be a very familiar queue setup to you. There's there's not really any surprises there. Um, they both have CPU only nodes. I mean, that's not the whole thing on Perlmutter, but the CPUs in the nodes are AMD instead of Intel, but you know, they're standard CPUs 
there's not a huge amount of surprises in terms of the architecture of, of those nodes. Um, the a AMD uh, CPUs are similar to Haswell in, in the clock speed, like they're fast clock speed, uh, but they're similar to KNL in the sense that they have a large number of cores per node. So they've got 64 cores per node. So anyway, those are some of the similarities, you know, that I see between the two systems. I mean, there are a few differences. Um, so one big difference, I would say, in terms of user environment is that we use LMOD instead of the standard modules that we've used on Corey, Edison, uh, Hopper, all of our past machines. We used modules. We're using one called LMOD, which stands for Lua modules. Uh, and so the, it's pretty similar. I mean, there's this, it's the same sort of um, commands that you would use with LMOD versus modules. But um, one big difference that we've seen people struggle with is that sometimes there are hidden modules that uh, that they only come out of hiding, if you will, when you load prerequisite modules. Uh, so one of them is netcdf. We've seen a lot of people struggle with finding uh, cray-netcdf module because it's not there. And if you do module avail cray-netcdf, you won't find it. Uh, and that's because it has dependencies that you have to load before you can actually load cray net CDF. So uh, there's a command in LMOD that's called module spider. And that is what you need to use instead of module avail in order to find any module. So if you do module spider cray net CDF, you will find cray net CDF and it says, um, you need to load these other modules before you can get um, this module. So, so that's the that's the trick uh, to remember uh, for LMOD, I would say. Now, also on Perlmutter, we have these GPU nodes where we've got one uh, CPU uh, and one and then four GPUs on the on the node. Um, and of course, GPU architectures. Uh, require substantially different programming models than your CPU code. So you can't just take your code that runs really well on a CPU and just convert it, and, you know, just recompile it or whatever and write it on a GPU node. You can't do that. Um, so uh, also we've seen like some codes may have different sort of GPU compatible and CPU only versions. Um, so you want to be sure that if you're going to run on these new GPU nodes, that you use the right type of code that that can exploit the GPUs. Um, and then, you know, like I said, we've got the programming environments. And so that concept is the same, but the actual programming environments are different. Um, so a big thing is that on Cori, our default programming environment is the Intel programming environment. And on Perlmutter, we don't even have an Intel programming environment and we don't plan to provide one. So that is a big difference, uh, something that we, we've seen some people struggle with. Alrighty, so if we move on to preparing for Perlmutter, uh, we're gonna talk about logging in. I see there are some, some questions here. Okay, is there a shared queue? Yes, there is a shared queue. Um, for the CPU nodes only. Right now, there's still some uh, changes that need to be made before we can provide a shared queue for GPUs. But yes, there is a shared queue. And then is there a big job discount? Excellent question, Nan. Um, we do not currently have a big job discount because Cori is still considered our flagship system. Um, so we don't actually have, so the reason we have a big job discount is because we have a big job metric where we have to uh, have certain percentage of hours that go towards these big jobs. Um, and so we offer a discount as an incentive for you to make those big jobs, right? Um, so we do not currently have that on, on Perlmutter. Um, I don't know um, when, when we're going to decide exactly about that for Perlmutter, um, because we're also looking at trying to change our, our 
metric from being so uh, exclusive to big jobs. But um, if we if we were going to do that, it would start in the new allocation year. It definitely wouldn't start any time before that. That's an um, excellent thank, question. Um, yeah. Can I follow up with that? Thanks, Rebecca. Um, so in the new allocation year, do you mean um, not the 2023, but the 2024 allocation year or? Oh, sorry. No, I, I do mean the 2023. So okay. like the third week of January. Okay, great. And so, so uh, but as long as Corey's still up and running, we can take advantage of that on Corey and then to be, TBD if it's going to be extended to Perlmutter. Correct. Correct. Right. I mean, I, I think it probably will be, but we, don't, we just haven't finalized it yet. Perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Okay. So logging into Perlmutter. Um, so I've actually encountered some people who were not aware that uh, you can use your same account that you have been using on Corey on Perlmutter. Um, everyone is enabled to use Perlmutter. At first, we did gate people to using Perlmutter, uh, you know, early on. Uh, but now uh, for, I don't know, at least six months or longer, everyone has been able to, to log on to Perlmutter. Um, and so to connect, you just do SSH Elvis, if that's your username, uh, Elvis at perlmutter-p1.nursc.gov right now. That's what uh, that's what the name of it is. Um, we'll we'll change that. We'll update that to just be perlmutter.nurse.gov soon, but not yet. Um, <clears throat> and then you just use your password and one-time password it is the same way that you would do it on Corey. So if your password is I love cheese and your uh, you know your one-time password is one two three four five six, then you just type I love cheese one two three four five six with no spaces or anything. You know the same way that you're already doing it on Corey. Uh, you can also use the SSH proxy uh, to reduce the, the frequency, the need for you to um, you know, authenticate every time you log in. Um, and of course, you, know, you can learn more about this in the nurse documentation, um, but it, it, it's no surprises. It's exactly the same way that Corey is, is used. Okay, so, Let's say you're a person who has codes and they are CPU only and you don't have any plans to use GPUs. Great. Just go and recompile your codes on Perlmutter. That's the thing that you're going to need to do. Uh, most of the time, this just works. Um, if it doesn't, then you know, please talk to us and we'll try to help you out. Uh, I have seen reports that the Perlmutter default compiler, the GNU compiler, is, is more pedantic than the Intel compiler, which is the default on Cori. Uh, so I've seen that to be true. Um, there'd be people who they, they're able to compile on, uh, on Cori without any warnings whatsoever. They go and they try and compile it on Perlmutter, they get warnings and errors. Um, so there are some flags that can reduce the strictness of, of the compiler. Um, and then there's a flag that's, that's minus W pedantic and that, can inform you about which standard a lot of your code is breaking. And then you can go back and use a flag that tells the uh, compiler to use that particular dialect or not use that particular dialect of, of C or, uh, or Fortran, I guess, or, or C++ for that matter. Um, I've mostly seen it with people doing C. Um, anyway, so, there are workarounds um, for if you're having trouble getting your code compiled because of this kind of strictness of the GNU compiler. Um, if, if that is the case, like I said, send in a ticket, come to us in office hours, um, you know, we'll help you out. That's what we're here for. Okay, now let's say that you are a person who wants to use the GPUs on Perlmutter. Excellent. Uh, there are many community codes that have GPU enabled versions. Uh, and so you can you can use those. You can compile those and run on Perlmutter. Uh, if you're a person who has your own homegrown uh, code and it is not yet GPU enabled, uh, you can probably port your code to use GPUs. It depends on what you're doing, but generally you probably could. 
Uh, it could be kind of a challenge or difficult to do by yourself. Uh, and so we have tools available that you can use to help you in this process. Uh, one of these tools is called Cody. And so likely in early 2023, we're going to have another training on how to use Cody for this purpose. And I see I have a question in the chat. Oh, I don't have a question. I have Richard giving us a, a, a link to the applications on. Yes. So if you go to docs.nurse.gov slash applications, um, then that will show you um, all of the applications that we have on machine or that we plan to have. Um, and you can take a look at that. Yes. And he's also left in the chat another good resource about uh, transitioning applications to Perlmutter. Thank you, Richard. Good stuff. Okay. So let's say that you are a Jupyter user. I'm, I would guess that we must have several Jupyter users in this audience. Um, so if you are a Jupyter user who has primarily CPU workloads, uh, you probably don't need to change much. You can probably just go about your business um, using the CPU nodes of Perlmutter, just like you did with the CPU nodes on Cori. But please, please test it out <laughs> to be sure. There could be some small, you know, gotchas or hiccups. Um, so please test it out well before Cori is, is gone. Um, and again, if you're running into issues, talk to us. We'd love to help you with this uh, so that we can make sure that you have what you need and that it's that it's working for you. Um, okay, so if you, on the other hand, want to use Jupyter um, with the GPUs on Perlmutter, then you probably need to rebuild your environment to exploit GPUs um, because chances are it doesn't already do that. Um, now, if you have used the Cori GPU testbed and have an environment set up for that, you're probably okay. You can probably use that on Perlmutter, but again, it goes back to the same thing. Please test it out uh, so that you can know for sure that it's going to work. Um, and then we can help you figure it out if you can't figure out how to fix it. Uh, so in, in all of these cases, please just give it a try. And really don't hesitate to contact us if you run into any issues. We're here to help. We really want to help you. Okay, so preparing for Perlmutter. Uh, so if you run jobs. Um, so the job scripts, because we're using Slurm, we have very similar queues. They're going to be very similar to what you see on Cori. So there's not going to be a whole lot of major gigantic changes in, in your scripts. Um, I highly recommend using the job script generator. Now, you know how we upgraded Iris last week. Um, the job script generator is now there in Iris. Uh, and so you can use that to help you to write a script that will help you to get the correct process affinities going on um, and a lot of other set up in, in your job script. I'm going to be honest with you all. When people send me a, a, a question about, about their job script, I just go straight to the job script generator and check there to see if what they're doing is correct. Um, it, makes, it makes life so much easier to use the job script generator. I'm a huge fan. Okay, so now let's talk about data migration. So I've, I've received some questions uh, with a bit of confusion about the data that is stored on nurse systems and whether it is retrievable from both Perlmutter and Cori. So let's start with the first thing. So if you have any files in your home directory or in your project community file system directory, those will be available on Perlmutter, no action required. So because these are global file systems, and these global file systems are mounted on all NERSC resources. So when I say home directory, of course, I'm talking about the directory where you land by default. And it's going to take the form of something like slash global slash homes slash e slash Elvis. 
Just send me your username is Elvis. Uh, and then your project community file system directory. This is a directory that is shared by members of your project and it's on the community file system. And, um, and so that file system is gonna be something like this slash global slash CFS slash CDIRS slash M1234 if your project was M1234. Now, before we had the community file system, we had a file system called project. And um, when we migrated everybody over to the community file system, we left this, um, this um, kind of like soft link called slash global slash project slash project dears that would then point to your project directory uh, on the community file system because we knew a lot of people had like, you know, scripts or whatever that were referencing their project directory. And so we were trying to help you out by having, having this um, former uh, mount point there so that you wouldn't have to change anything in your script. But <clears throat> we are not carrying that forward to Perlmutter. So that is something that you're gonna wanna look for in your script is if you have any reference to project or project years, um, you're gonna wanna change that to CFS and CDIRS, okay? Otherwise, it should just work. Okay, so now if you use the HPSS archive system, that is available on Perlmutter. So you can access HPSS from Perlmutter just like you can access it from Cori, um, you know, using HTAR or other, you know, H start it, commands that start with H uh, to access it. Uh, just like you do on, on Cori. It's, it, there's no difference there. Now, the one remaining thing is the Cori Scratch file system, okay? That is attached only to Perlmutter, or I'm sorry, the Cori one is attached only to Cori and not to Perlmutter. Perlmutter has its own Scratch, which is attached only to Perlmutter and not to Cori. Now, I want to remind you that scratch file systems are used for temporary storage only while your data is actively being used um, and it's subject to purging. So if you leave something on there for longer than 12 weeks, then we reserve the right to delete it. Um, so I, I, want, I want you all to keep that in mind and that this is the same thing in the Perlmutter scratch. Um, but if you have some things on the Cori Scratch that somehow you want to get them to the Perlmutter Scratch so that you can use them on Perlmutter, um, there is no simple way to do that, no one-step process. Um, so you probably need to go from the Cori Scratch to the community file system to Perlmutter Scratch. Or if for smaller files, you may be able to just do a, a you know, like an SCP or, or something like that. Um, so are, are, are there globe uh, are there globus nodes? Could you could you set up two globus nodes and and use globus to transfer? Um, maybe. Uh, I I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. Um, and so please send in a, a ticket and find and find out. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. It's not. Uh, not something I do. Uh, okay. And then the path to the user scratch directory. Okay, so on all machines, there is um, there is a, 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 a it's called a macro, but it's an environment variable. And so if you if you do dollar sign scratch, it will tell you um, the the path to your scratch directory. So that's you can find that on. Um, uh, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't replicate those here. Sorry, Meng Shi, but but yeah, you should be able to find that yourself for your scratch directory. Okay, so next we're going to talk a little bit about how we're here to help. I've been saying this the whole time, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, we are here to help you. We want you to be successful in in using Perlmutter. Uh, so we really want to help you move over to Perlmutter. 
So I told you earlier, I'll tell you again, we've got this migrating from Cori to Perlmutter training coming up on December 1st. So it's really focused on building codes and running jobs. Um, and there's going to be a hands-on session at the end where you can bring your own code and bring your own jobs and try them out and get help from NERSC experts. Um, so, so please attend that training and sign up anyways, even if you can't make it, um, because we're going to uh, record the training and we're going to post it on our YouTube channel, uh, complete with uh, professional closed captions on the on the video. So please do come to that training. Um, and then also we've got the Corey to Perlmutter office hours. Um, so our next one is going to be the Friday after this December 1st um, training. So day after that, we're going to have office hours where you can follow up more on hopefully on what you've learned on the first or with stuff, other stuff that you, that you need to uh, get help on. All of them are going to be from 9 a.m. to noon. Um, the next one after that is going to be the Thursday, December 8th. And then Friday, December 16th. Um, and then we'll have two more in early January. And then we'll probably have more after that. We just planned for, through this allocation year for now. Um, and so all, all this is, this is a Zoom meeting that we put up. And then you just drop in anytime, anytime between 9 and noon Pacific. And we have people there who will help you. We've got breakout rooms. That's how we do it. We have... So first of all, I have at least three or four people who are there to help you. Um, and we have breakout rooms. And then if you have kind of a long in-depth problem that you want to help solving, then we send you and an expert to the breakout room to resolve that issue. Um, so it's super fun. Um, I love it. I, I get to meet a lot of users and and kind of understand more about what's going on with, with your problems that, that you're encountering as you make this transition. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, to once again stress that we are here to help you and we would, we would love to help you more. Okay, uh, do we have, let's see. Okay, so that's the end of the uh, Corey to Perlmutter uh, transition presentation. So do you have any other questions for me? I saw there were some in the chat, but I think, I think, thanks Richard for answering some of those questions for me about the scratch quota and the globus. Yes. Thank you all. Any questions? Um, okay, somebody asked me, is there a training on compilation? Yeah, so so that's something that's going to be covered in that December 1st training about uh, how to compile your codes. Uh, and if, you know, if you need more assistance with that, of course, we're happy to help you as well. Okay, um, so hopefully, um, hopefully we've moved at least most of those, the 50% of people that I polled at the beginning of this uh, who did not know what they needed to do to prepare for a Perlmutter, hopefully we've moved you up at least one level where you at least know what you need to do in order to prepare for Perlmutter. Um, but if that's not the case, then of course, happy to answer any questions either right now or uh, you know in, in a ticket or in one of our office hours. All right, good question. All righty. Well, so let's talk about what's coming up next. Uh, oh, maybe we have another question. Oh, okay. Um, so in December uh, at the next NEG meeting, uh, we're gonna talk about preparing for allocation year 2023. Uh, and then, in January, we'll talk about uh, user community in engagements. Um, so we've developed some plans. We need some feedback from users about what we're going to do for the next year. Uh, and then, of course, I haven't figured out exactly what, what we'll do in February. So I welcome any ideas or suggestions about topics that you all would like to hear more about. 
Uh, and of course, we always welcome like lightning talks from NERSC users about the research that you use NERSC for. Um, you know, your research is kind of what what makes our jobs, you know, really outstanding and and worth doing. Okay. So, next final final agenda item is last month's numbers. Um, so I got these numbers from. Um, <clears throat> from our calculations. So query utilization was at, at 97.48% on the KNL nodes uh, last month. Um, large jobs. So that that's the that's the one we were talking about earlier with the big job discount. Um, so jobs that use at least 1,024 nodes on the KNL nodes of Corey, those count as large jobs. And so 36% of our uh, time was spent on these large jobs. Uh, last month, we had 666 new tickets. I don't know what you people were doing to give us that number of tickets. Uh, and we managed to close 705 tickets. Um, and so we still have a seven, about 700 open tickets. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so I see I have a question here from Jack. When I submit to the shared queue, I get rec node not avail with SQ. Is this temporary or am I submitting it improperly? Well, so um, so Jack, maybe you can answer my question so that I can make sure I understand this. Um, your job, like if you do, uh, so you did SQ uh, and you looked at your particular job and it says rec node not avail. Well, all that means is that um, there currently aren't any nodes available to run your job. Like your job will run when there are nodes available, but typically you see something like that because, um, because your job just doesn't have high enough priority to get in and it, at this point in time. And, and that's why it's not running yet, but it will run soon. Okay, Francois. Francois asks, what does large jobs mean? Um, good question, Francois. Um, so what I mean by large jobs, I mean jobs that use a substantial portion of the resource. Um, so in the case of um, our large jobs metric, um, we, we, we take all jobs, okay, jobs are considered large jobs if they use at least one eighth of the, the total machine node count rounded down to the dearest power of two number of nodes, okay? So um, on, on Corey in the KNL nodes, we have like about 9,000 nodes. So if you take an eighth of that and you round to the nearest power of two below it, uh, then that is 1,024 nodes. So uh, large jobs, have to use at least 1,024 KNL nodes in order to be considered large. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, cool. Um, so do we have any more questions or do we have any comments about things that you might like to discuss at a future NUG meetings or anything like that? It's a very quiet group today, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that you were able to join and I hope to see you next time and, and thanks again. And, Please don't hesitate to contact us if you're running into any issues um, getting on to Perlmutter and using Perlmutter. And after this is over, I will um, post a PDF of these slides to, to the um, web page for this meeting. Um, and then I will upload the, uh, the meeting uh, recording to the NERSC YouTube channel as well. <laughs>